discussion. Uh, and basically, here's the goal. Uh, the goal here is not, not to sit here and lampoon Overwatch. Our goal is to sit here and think why they made this change, what the ramifications of this change may or may not be, when then try and come up with some positives and try and come up with some negatives, some negatives that haven't already been hashed out over and over and over again. Um, um, sorry, okay. Uh, Renee, you ready? Let's see here. Space. Hello. Hello. Hey, how's it going? I'm all right. Appreciate you doing this. So, Renee, do you want to kind of give yourself a quick, quick introduction before we start talking this through? I'm Renee. I founded and played Off Tank on Exa, Exa Blivione, in EU contenders for the last two years ago. Coached for a little bit. Now I'm kind of away from things for a bit with uni stuff, but, sure. but yeah, been around for a while with Exa. That's pretty much it. Okay. And well, maybe employed now. Sure. Sure. Okay. Cool. So, like, you are the uh, <laughs> you're you are an off tank main, and so obviously your opinion is kind of be kind of interesting here. Um, I guess like what the way we can do this is let's actually let me actually pull up a word document here because I'd love to like actually document the thoughts from chat and your thoughts as well. So like Overwatch two here, and then let me fix up my UI. Uh, Not that's bad. To happen. Um, uh, okay. And image two, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll put this we'll put this in the corner. Okay, so we wanted to talk over like all the changes. So you made a list. You did me a huge, huge, huge favor, and you made like the list of all the stuff that we talked about. So what, like, in order of like, I guess it's just in order of chronological, like what was discussed. First thing they did was just five v five. They kind of just went out the gate with that. I guess there was no avoiding it because if they showed any any okay. gameplay, that was that was the first thing they started. So, so I really feel like I guess we should just go ahead and crank on that then. Um, so I wanted to hear, like, do you before we even like get into like lampooning the whole five v five thing? Do you think that there's any like positive side or, or way of spinning the five versus five thing? I think it's less likely that we'll get stuff like. Well, obviously we're in a stuff like double shield, but I think what we can't have anymore is metas where it's like hard cooldown rotation type thing, where it's like you steal main tank, off tank, they 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 go between cooldowns and you kind of just sit in one choke like for ten minutes, with right. you know rotating the same thing. I think by having one tank, it kind of it forces you to kind of be in or out. There's less. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So like I think what you were saying is like like goats existed because we had a lot of brawl stuff. And, and a lot of them, like, there just isn't going to be the same kind of brawl that maybe what we've seen before, at least as much. Um, yeah, people aren't going to last as long. And I think that the way they're doing with maps as well, kind of tying into it. Yeah. Like, especially the push maps, they're, like, really, really chaotic. Like, they're, like, U-shaped or S-shaped, and you are you can basically spawn and go straight to where the fight is going, like, dodge, like, half the map. Right. And I think what that's trying to kind of push towards is that it's less, like, think, like, I don't know, Blizzard World first point defense, where you stand on left side of point or right side of point double shield brian whatever you sit there and then you play for like three minutes with your bat or whatever no wait a second do you have it the, like is there an example like so you're saying like the entire map shape is different so do we have like an example of this chat or if it's if you go on the stream you just go through the vod it's pretty clear okay okay like they like the, you have like the a first game they show because i i miss this because i would probably like 20 30 minutes in they play the first map okay where they show the first push I, I would be very interested if they... Oh no, they start with New York. So it's the second map. Okay. He helped out a lot. On but effectively what it's like is like, I think this is going to be very, at least on the new map types, it's going to be very difficult to like, hold one place. So this is the first map. This is a hybrid map. Okay. That one you're on now, that's... that's so push. I need to skip for it then. No, that one, this one, this one now is fine. Yeah, I okay, this is fine. One the Lucio POV. Okay, yeah, now yeah. I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta watch this then. Because, cause like, the way you describe it, because, like, the big thing that we... That I, I, I've tried to do is, like, talk about, like, map control and flank control and angle control and, like, how that like, kind of dictates Overwatch and things like that. 
But like, if you're saying this is like completely different there, that might even change like the fundamentals of map control. Like maybe it doesn't matter. So, so like, uh, it's like, okay, you run to the robot. It was like, this is like a first fight cost type thing. Yeah. So exactly. you have 30 seconds, it won't unlock. You have kind of time to find your, your footing. Okay. But looking at the games, I don't know if it's like a symptom of watching gold players play, but it looks like with one tank, especially like, where do you set up, you know? Yeah. Cause it's, it's all over the place when you, when you start pushing across. There's like a million flanks DPS can get on. You don't have like an off tank anymore that can mark one flank. There isn't even like yeah. enough people to mark things. So th this is still would still be important to control. So like maybe, and then what happens? Okay, so Team Red just looks like they're winning this. Okay. Okay, so they sends the robot back. And he pushes so the robot. Around. The robot walks between the barricade, and the barricade is like what we previously had with like the payload max distance. And, and it this is, like this is blue side spawn. Blue side spawn here. So, okay, so they're pushing it closer and closer and closer towards their spawn. Yeah. So you go get, towards spawn, and, and until you get to the checkpoint, yeah. So when you get to the checkpoint, it gives you a forward spawn, which yeah. can get undone if they get back to the middle. Interesting. So if blue team, so if red team were to get all the way to that circle on the right of your screen. They would get a forward spawn, but it would get reset. I mean, if blue team then pushes. This, it back. this looks a lot like payload, right? Where you kind of almost have to anticipate where the fuck's going to happen and set up around that. The thing that yeah. I think makes it awkward for me is like, at least with this in comparison to payload, maybe it's just this map. From I don't see a lot of advantageous positions here, right? Like there's a little flank here. There's a ton of just a wall, and then if you flip to the other POV there's nothing here there's nothing like between these this high ground here and like what looks to be some space over here there's nothing at all that's advantageous for attackers at all right so hmm interesting okay so this, this, this these maps are going to be throwing me off now a lot of these maps did we see how many of these maps like felt more enclosed to you or like versus like more open they never really had long sidelines. It definitely feels like they're trying to kind of counteract. Like everyone's had a lot of concerns with like, oh, double snipers gonna be really good because there's only one tank to deal with it, or whatever. And it seems like they're trying to counteract that with like more map design and like very deathmatchy maps where it's like the sidelines aren't that long. And in like in that sense, then DPS can okay. deal with snipers more, where you can you can okay. flank and you can take kind of mid range angles. Okay. Okay. But okay. yeah, it is very kind of enclosed. Broly, kind of that's what they're aiming for. right right okay so so one obvious like drawback of the five versus not drawback but adjustment with the five versus five is we talk about like how dps can control space and tanks can control space well it's gonna be a lot of dps controlling space now um which to me means that like we said about the whole brawl uh, adjustment moving away from brawl that's gonna i feel like that's gonna enable supports like briggs and zens and things like that that can control across the map right and they don't have to be in one spot and like um in other words, if, if we're playing like to control the map, if you have one less tank hero, uh, you're going to be relying more on your DPS to like play for flanks and win flanks and things like that on their own. Like you were yeah. saying, holding space, which means heroes like Brig and Zen who can throw armor packs and harmony and discord and things like that. I think it's going to be a little bit more valuable. Like Lucio feels like she, he's going to be trash. Lucio's going to have to be reworked. Um, yeah, on this map, on these maps, at least he definitely would be because it's like yeah as you said it's like there's no longer like one choke where you play with lose your aura everyone in your team fits in it it's like briggs in you can cover the map you can spread your 3d 2d psl with one tank everywhere yep 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 now but i i have i have a bone to pick because some like i think something that we can talk about here is like there's a word that's getting thrown out around a lot and i think the way you're using it and the way other people are using it are different okay and this is the word all right let me get my little i see i can actually use i know that i have text here deathmatch i always forget this oh my gosh deathmatch okay now, when you say deathmatch, what do you mean by that? So before I like start lampooning. The way I see deathmatch is like the concept of kind of like frontline backline is kind of broken down. Mm -hmm. So there's no like clear place where it's like this bit of the map, there's no fighting. This bit of map, there is fighting. It's kind of like everywhere has like a fairly even to being fought in. There's no super great positions. There's no super weak positions. Mm -hmm. So that every fight just devolves really. That's the way I kind of see it. Sure. So there's like less of a, this is frontline. This is where we're brawling, fighting, smashing mouth. This is, it's just kind of like a fluid. Um, yeah. It's almost like a, like, do you know what a, do you know what a, um, uh, daddy long legs is? Have you ever heard of that spider? 
Is that yes. just like anything? Okay. So it's like, for those in chat who don't know, it's like a day long Instagram, like a really, really, really tiny body and like these super long legs. And like, this is kind of like how I look at like this new Overwatch 2 is that there's like these like little minute, like tiny little core, you know, it's not much of a core, but these tiny little engagements that are happening very far away from multiple different positions. Now I saw, now Reddit obviously is like flipping out and Twitter's flipping out and everybody's flipping out. So there's all sorts of like crazy crap that's being thrown out. And I think I want to try and strain some of that out because we can be negative about this, but we don't have to be stupid about this. One of the things that I'm consistently seeing is that, oh, now it's just going to be complete chaos and there's no there's no team play and then it's just complete lack of coordination. Um, actually, let me see if I can find the comment because I think it's something that I want to not necessarily discuss so much as just shoot down and say, I don't want to hear this anymore in my chat at all. Okay, um, let me see, where was it? Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, exactly. So one of the comments I'm looking at here, I'll actually just throw it on, on uh, my chat right here. He's losing the Overwatch match, views go up, but the game plays like team deathmatch, okay? Okay, um, I'd be easier to watch but with way less strategy and coordination. Like if you want to watch DPS at each other, poke at each other, play, play fine. Like what a whole lot of horse manure. Um, like obviously it's going to change how the game is played and it might be like less fun to watch. It might be less fun to play. Like we'll talk about that. But saying that, oh, this one fewer tank and now that just completely ruins the coordination, that's the most plat chat take I've ever heard in my life. Um, there's going to be a lot of coordination about controlling the map. And like we've talked about already about Brig and Zen will be used to kind of help their flankers and their DPS win different wars. Uh, as a tank, I think your job is going to be a lot trickier and a lot weirder about how you're controlling space and how you're pushing space. But it's not at all going to be anything like Team Deathmatch at all. Uh, the spawns are not RNG. You're not going to be playing to, like the goal is not to just try and get as many kills as you can. The goal is to win team fights, just like it is in Overwatch. So I think the first thing, like I want to shoot down, and Renee, I want your thoughts on this as well, is that like this whole oh, it's going to be like team deathmatch. It's going to be completely chaotic. It's just going to be DPS popping off the entire time. Garbage. That that's that is not at all something that is even going to be the case whatsoever. I think the kind of starting point of like if people got put in Overwatch two like today, people would just play bolt comps. The same kind of idea. Like what we see now is ball comp where like the second tank barely tanked he was basically in his back line anyway that's where i see like people would st as a starting point for overwatch 2. right right if right. like the heroes won't change drastically or anything right right i think the thing like if we want to talk about like um interesting changes with tank lines and i want your thoughts on this here so the, my first thought when i saw this especially with the maps that we were seeing being played i like oh ryan's got to be dead right ryan's got to be dead because he's a tank that desert wants a lot of support he doesn't work well with the supports like briggs and mercy that look immediately uh appetizing uh for these uh types of compositions and these points and i think he's also like you were saying he's the, the tank that's going to be hit the hardest by the more open pulling it apart less brawl core centered yeah. uh play style because he can't reach a lot of stuff right if he's not rotating as a clump um then he's not gonna be doing a whole lot like I don't know. Did you play during goats, right? Yeah, I did. Okay, so like when we see these triple, like these triple, like whenever I think of like what I expect the new tank playstyle to be like, I expect it to be more like the triple DPS versus goats kind of playstyle, where you play like ball or something like that. That was just like self-sustained and just kind of was generally there to harass and disrupt uh, for the most yeah. part, and, and to like either contest or hold space. So I look at this and I'm like. Um, I mean, you guys have, I don't know how many, you guys have all played Quick Play Classic, right? You know, you get the four DPS. You're not going to go Reinhardt. You're going to go Ball, or you're going to go Hog, or you're going to go Sigma, right? Um, maybe you'll go like a Zarya or something like that. But I think that, to me, and, and I think the reason why I want those tanks is because they don't demand a ton of healing. Um, and they're also, they also relatively, either they either have good range or good mobility. What are your thoughts? I think... So they with the Ryan thing, they actually addressed that kind of distancing. They they made his charge cancelable, they made it more turnable, and they're giving him two fire strikes. So definitely aware of Ryan's kind of shortcomings when he hasn't got that tank partner and when it's more chaotic. But I think it also depends on map geometry as well. Like it depends does you know, does King's Row get changed? Ryan will still be good on King's Row. Yeah. If in Overwatch 2, he'll still be good. But it depends do they make King's Row super flanky? You know, he'll still you'll he'll still still have kind of points where he can shine if they if they don't match the kind of newer maps yep yep, yep. so maybe it's that 
tank players, the kind of tank role kind of converges in like a middle ground between off tank and main tank, where it's like, yes, you have to harass and move around a bit more, but it, you kind of need a balance of the skill sets because, like, in a sense, the newer the newer kind of play style that they're aiming for matches kind of how off tanks played more, where it's more dynamic, it's more between your front line and your back line, more kind of dueling people and stuff like yeah. that, less than the main tank, I rotate my CDs in a choke or on a corner. So it might be that tanks kind of merge and some off tanks go to DPS and some go to main tank or like the tank and it kind of merges. But but yeah, I think the independent tanks on push will see a lot more use. But then in the other maps, I'm curious to what they do, especially with like Arista and Sigma who are like, they weren't played at all on stream because they were like quarantined or something for like drastic changes. Okay. So I'm curious to what they do today because they... They explicitly said that because they were static, they were looking at them. So I guess okay. the idea is that they want to make tanks as a whole more, more flexible. Right. Um, I think that's interesting though, because like what you're saying about like having main tanks play like more like an off tank play style. Because I think the idea with things is still that they should be at least with main tanks and current Overwatch is that they still create space. But we've seen this with the return of like the cloudies, right? The LH cloudies, and that that there is no more. You can just you know, W mouse one on the point and then just force point and survive. I think like objective pressure, AOE sustain, DPS power creep to an extent, all of those things have kind of impacted how t main tanks have to play. And so that like clearing angles, clearing flanks, clearing and holding high grounds has become a lot more important. And that's something that we've seen a lot. Um, like especially like brawl into dive, brawl into spam, things like that. Um, and not just like the evolvement of that in terms of the, the game balance, but also in terms of as people's understanding of the game gets better. Like like you go back and I guarantee you watch GM Reinhardt from like two, three years ago, a lot of them are just gonna go AFK on point, you know, or they're just, they're not gonna go clear high ground. I remember, who was it? Was it Gesture? Um, there was some Korean Reinhardt who would play uh, Reinhardt, some like, like, like Overwatch League Reinhardt who play Reinhardt on Gibraltar and he would go and clear high ground right uh as reinhardt on first point gibraltar and at the time i remember people were going like what on earth clearing the high ground is reinhardt like what are you doing you're playing him like a monkey and now we look back at that now and we're like well duh like what else are you gonna do is sit on cart like you're just gonna insta die like that just seems like such the easiest thing so i think that the thing that's making this less um like more understandable and less like the end is nigh for me here is because I feel like that the game was already moving that direction. People were understanding that like you cannot just hold shield and stand in main and just walk, run it down mid over and over again. You just can't do that anymore. You can't do that with Winston. Uh, you can't do that with Reinhardt. You can't do that at all. Like controlling the map, controlling the angles is really important. The concern, like you were saying, is like with the Arisa Sigma stuff, is that we've got tanks that aren't that like Reinhardt can do that. But he's not very he he's not as good at it as compared to, to like a diva right or like a Zarya, and he's also slow and so like you have all these shortcomings about these more static tanks and, and i'm concerned about it um okay so less hard brawl not gonna be random tds less strategy at least they're looking at the static tanks um what are do you have any other idea like thoughts on like the pot overall positives for this they talked a little bit about like visual clutter um what are your thoughts on that I mean, it's kind of hard to like look at it from an objective standpoint because I've played the game for so for so long, so I'm kind of like used to the clutter part. I always, I always hear like people saying that when you know their friend watches Overwatch for the first time, they have no clue what's going on, for example. So it's so, certainly from like you know getting people to watch the game for the first time would be easier for people to deal with. And I guess in certain scenarios, or like like the Bat Brigger Rissa Sigma metas, where like on a corner you have six people in each other's faces, that to an extent gets lowered. Yes. I don't know if it's like a good or bad thing. It it definitely like isn't like super enjoyable, but I don't know if it's like you remove a role just because just because of right. those instances. Right. And that's I don't the think thing. it's like a massive thing. If it is a negative that the visual clutter is a problem, I don't. We're not saying that. Oh, this is the best solution for that. I'm. We're just saying it is. It but is yes, it certainly it will certainly kind of lighten things up, especially because just the comps that kind of arise from not having two tanks means you can't you can't lock down in those like positions so much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, do you have anything else that you think is a positive? I, I want to think about this and then I want to ask chat what they think because I think I, it would be good to have 150 people actually think about ideas and not just two. <laughs> I mean, I think the direction that they're taking the game, in a sense, as you said, with like how people are moving in that direction already, I guess they, they're, they're kind of aware of where the game is sort of going. It's that it's going to be more about like not just playing on the objective, controlling the rest of the map. And if you look at like the new hybrid maps, especially, the capture points are like all surrounded by high grounds they don't go through the payloads don't go through chokes anymore they go like under bridges and it's kind of more like snaking roads and paths around the point so 
it's it's definitely clear that they're they're looking more at these things like angle control and stuff and making it perhaps less one like less outdated maps like where it's like one oppressive angle that you have to control instead of you know yeah. they're kind of making it more complicated right. there's more angles to control and you've got less people to do it so you know how do you split that up so it might be that by the time we get you know we've still got like what two years of overwatch one before we have overwatch two and you know god knows what we'll right. be how we'll be playing right. by then so right. yeah right. it makes sense like if you look at king's row third to me that's such an arc that's like feels like a very archaic map design yeah yeah. Like it's just like big high ground that like basically nobody can access, basically no flings, basically no control, not nothing. The health packs are kind of like, eh. It's just it's a weird map design. And then you compare that yeah. uh, with like, um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. If you go on the stream, actually, if you look at the the first map they show, New York, the third point on that is kind of like Kings Row Third, but like modernized in a sense. It's like the high grounds are kind of around the point instead and it kind right, of flows so, into like an open right, So it's the so, first map. It, it's right, like fairly so, early on the street. Right, so we're in yeah, this here. one. So on, this is second point now. Right. Yeah. So when it gets to like the inside bit, they're coming into it now. This is kind of like what they're trying to go at, I think. Right. So it's like indoors, but it's like... Yeah. So like I'm just looking here. High ground here, high ground flank here, high ground flank here, some cover here, obviously high ground here, control here. It feels like... In a way, it feels so open, but also that there's so much, there's so many corners and alcoves. It feels like every map, this feels like wide open space, but also it's not quite op wide open space at the yeah, same time. Yeah, so there's something they mentioned is that to, to kind of counterbalance the, the lack of tanking, they were going to add more like natural cover. So they're going to make people use corners right, more, right. use like small walls, use alcoves, use boxes, stuff like that. Right, because I feel like Widow would be oppressive here, right? But then I'm also like, well, you can play over here, and then you can play over here, and then you can play here, and then you can play here, and I'm not sure where this leads to on the left here. Um, but I feel like there are there are a decent amount of options to play around the, the relatively longer sight lines here. So I'm just like, I want to get a better feel of this. Yeah, there's there's a lot of space. Holy smokes. So that's what I was kind of thinking with like the kind of counterbalance to Widow having one less tank to deal with is that she now has a lot right. more places to worry right. about. You right. can't just stick Venom Mine on the one flank that exists right. and then right. play it, it out. It's funny that people are talking about this because I remember distinctly a, a narrative that was being pushed around a lot right as right before Goat's meta came around is that, oh, Dive is too strong because, uh, you know, and Ryan is bad because there are too many high grounds in Overwatch. The map design is imbalanced. Um, and this is because, you know, Reinhardt's were kind of stupid and they didn't know how to clear high ground and stuff. But, like, I wonder if, like, I really do wonder if this whole evolution does kind of mirror because they on purpose are thinking about what, what we're talking about, like angle control and things like that. Like, like are we just, like, is it like we just because we think it's that so? Or is there some, like, obviously, like, one, the, the elephant in the room here, and I'm, I'm, I'm going all over the place, is the Q time, right? Mm. And I think that's that's the like the thing that we need to. I mean, it has to go into the positives here. I mean, Q times are it's a big problem. For sure. Yeah. It's. I mean, what what are the, what, I mean? You tell me. You you still play rank to it like off and on, right? Yeah, now and then. Okay, so compare on average tank time to DPS and tank time to support time for me, because I, I don't know what it's like at the higher rings. Um, it was normally tank shortest queues, and then it's like sometimes support is the longest queue. Actually, I saw people complaining about that. It's kind of changed a bit now with the priority passes because people are all over the place like off rolling and stuff. So there's kind of it's kind of balanced out actually. The priority passes I think have helped it. Yeah. But um. But yeah, typically it was tanks insta queue, DPS longest, and then on some days supports long as well. But like in the middle. Yeah. It but feels yeah, having like one a huge fewer tanks definitely. It feels yeah. Like, I, so I don't one know. fewer tanks definitely adds to that. For helps sure. It, I mean. For sure. So like it's I mean without question, and I've and I've seen this with like plats and diamonds and and silver as well. like even there, it's usually like. Tanks have the shortest mm. queue time. Tanks have the tanks have the shortest queue time over and over and over and over again, and like, I mean that 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 hurts because that hurts everybody because what it means is like if there are fewer tanks, that means that there's fewer DPS. Like that that's, that just increases the queue times for everybody else. So like again, we don't know if this is the best solution for that. I mean I know this is something that's talked about. Like maybe we should make tanks more interactive or more interesting. The fact that we haven't had a new tank in such a long time. Uh, also hurts that i mean we haven't had any new heroes in a long time but like a new tank here would definitely appeal to more people um uh, i mean we have still have like less than half the tanks than i think we do of dps so that's a problem um but yeah okay um chat i want to i want to pause a second what do you guys think are some potential positives of this this whole five versus five approach um 
I think that there, we talked about queue time, less objective based devs are kind of adjusting with maybe the times with it in terms of like what we're understand to be the game, the way to play the game, less visual clutter. They are looking at static things that's not forgotten. Not, it's not going to be as bad as people say in terms of the random TDM, less strategy. It's not at all going to be the case. Definitely going to be less hard brawl compositions, which might be fun to play for sure, but are not fun to watch. Um, more individual impact. So yeah, exactly. That's a big one right there. So less complaint, co less complaining about ELO hell, right? <laughs> um, you're going to feel your impact, you know, more because you're, I mean, it's gonna it, it's like it's like a little bit tricky because you could also argue that a bad player will hurt your uh you know your team's performance more but assuming that the matchmaking isn't complete dog i think the statistics say that you're going to have a bigger like you have more of an impact in each and every game renee what do you think i mean yeah the, the tank thing is like when you have one tank if I mean, it depends how like important the tank becomes you know if like the tank is just does the similar thing to a DPS, but he's just beefier, then you can kind of deal with a worse tank better rather than, rather than when, like, you know, if one tank drags your other tank down, you know, if you need a Zarya to bubble you properly to do anything, mm -hmm. then you kind of, you know, even in a 6v6, you, you can have one person ruin it. But if it's kind of like the gap, like what tank does becomes more similar to what DPS does in terms of playing around angles and stuff, then maybe... You know, maybe you see you see like that one master's tank on your team being less of a problem, or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe because you only have one tank, if you get the master's tank, it's GG. So it could go yeah. both ways. Yeah, yeah. But also at the same time, if you get the master's tank, it's GGs. But also we're talking about like maybe tanks are like beefier, but also maybe not quite as impactful. So like who knows? Um, yeah, it's hard like, to say. I think it's hard to say. Like I, I think I'm curious to see how like if this ends up being that the one tank is like really really impactful if they adjust matchmaking a little bit like maybe they have like for example you know four 4.5 players and one masters um, main tank and you realize that holy cow main tank or the one tank is a really really impactful role so if we put even you know five four point or four 4.5 players and one masters player in a lobby they're going to get rolled by five players that are like 4.1 or 4.2 because having a 4.2 tank is so much of an impact so maybe we have like I mean, I don't know how they do that, but adjust the matchmaking so that, that they understand that having a higher rank tank is very, yeah. very, very impactful. Okay. Or, or vice versa, maybe tank is like less impactful than it is right now. Although I think if that's the case, a lot of people will be very unhappy. One thing mm. that was brought up in chat and I wanted your thought on it was the impact of losing someone is massive now. Right? Yeah. So now obviously five versus six, you don't generally win those in Overwatch. The thing is that like, 25 percent chance 20 percent chance as opposed to 50 it's a it's a big dip right i think it's going up though you think so yeah i think i think kind of the, the same mentality that brought around like you know the angle control less playing around like just play on point it's kind of i think it's kind of been accompanied at least for me i don't know if it's that kind of just me going up in the in the kind of the rankings is that more things you know i think shock kind of started and like with goats where like the winnable mentality where like you start ulting when you're down you don't you know you keep ulting mm -hmm. that kind of mentality it might carry over so that i think it's i think it's brought up the 5v6 win percentage but i think that will kind of fall down again in 5v5 just because yeah. the right now you can win a 5v6 because if you lose someone in your kill box you can still win you hit you you still hit your combo you can easily trade back more people but i think if it becomes more kind of spread out more 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 scrappy then losing one person like you know if they lose their 1v1 you know the trace of 1v1 on one flank Mm -hmm. suddenly you're not going to just insta trade it somewhere else right exactly it's not it's that it goes from being okay we're down 17 percent of our value or 16.7 or whatever yeah and now we're down 20 percent of our value right it's and it's, just... it's it's more it's more difficult to trade it at least i mean maybe you can you know put less resources on one flank and more on the other and then you can you know trade one for one on like individually but there's going to be less of like the whole team gives up one thing and then takes back three or whatever right right so five being being at a man advantage in a five versus five is way bigger of a deal yeah because um, i think you can grind it out you know that one dps that is free or the one tank that's now uncontested they'll think it'll make more of a difference sure sure okay um chat do you guys have any i'm gonna give you guys a couple of more seconds do you guys have anything so i know there's a lot of like negative chat right now and again i understand but do you guys have like we're trying to like get something positive and constructive out of this do you guys have any other positive spins or thoughts about this whether it's overwatch league casual play um I mean, okay, let's be honest here. Um, people are going to try it. I think that is one positive thing. Um, it might not be 
a very big positive thing but overwatch has historically never been really scared of trying things uh and doing goofy things that maybe other games weren't really uh keen to do um for better or for worse i think with this there people are going to be mad and angry but everyone they're going to try it a lot of yeah. people are going to try it. i think more people would try it than it would be if nothing else was changed so that so if you're sure it's a good thing if the overwatch developers like i'm people are trash talking it but they're going to love it i just wish they would try it they'll love it then this is really good it's a you know it's a high risk move right because you're going to get a lot of people trying it but you also have a chance to make a lot of people really mad um I thought the same thing with like when they when they announced like oh overwatch 2 is like years away and a lot of people were like really mad about it and i kind of the, the spin i took on it was i'd rather they like go all in on overwatch 2 and like make it really different make it really interesting because that's what's going to get like you know xqc will play overwatch 2. you yeah. have like 100k people watching play overwatch 2 everyone wants to see that mm -hmm. so i think the more effort they put into making overwatch 2 the best they can rather than rushing it out like within a year yeah, I think the better they stand for the longevity of the franchise. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I agree. I think like it, just the fact that pe people are talking about it right now, a lot of yeah. people are talking about it, and there's people say, "Was well, there's no such thing as bad publicity?" Um, people are going to try it. Like it's going to happen, and people are talking about it a lot more than they would if nothing would have been changed here. So it's ballsy, it's questionable, but we will see. Another one. Uh, what do you think about the, one of the comments in chat is maybe easier balancing? What are your thoughts? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What happened a lot was like people's concern is like and someone mentioned it as well when you're like designing a tank if you it happened with sigma people like jeff said sigma was a main tank and he just wasn't yeah you know that was an oversight by the devs it happens whatever when you have one tank you don't have to think about what if you put this guy with that guy you know someone else mentioned if you if you you know you, you go into a lobby right now in overwatch someone locks ball you can't play ryan anymore you can't play i don't know i forgot something else now yeah rissa in some cases right right so now it's like you can pick one tank and it's like more workable because it's no there's no tank synergy issues right right so you, you know now you have one tank to play around you don't have like that one guy on the solo queue hog going around on his own with your ball on the other side of the map and stuff like that so yeah so I've i think got... once they've figured it out they definitely have an easier time kind of giving each tank an identity right right that makes sense right makes sense i think that that identity is, is going to be the tricky part though because i've got vulcan like oh, we can jump the negative for a split second because vulcan uh over with odyssey and he's saying uh balancing some of these offings is going to be really hard and i agree like i look at something like a hog um or a i mean ball ball is going to be a, a, obviously ball is very easy self-sustained great map control i mean there's nothing to touch there in fact i think uh he might even need to be nerfed depending on how these things go through but man how do you how do you balance a, a diva or a zarya around that like i think you saw the zarya with the some of the uh the bubble charges which gives her a little bit more flexibility but she's still a very very slow low range tank mm, um and that's yeah. and that's a problem um diva does have mobility going for her but she has basically no range whatsoever and she's very easy to poke out um so i look at hog and i'm like he'll probably be okay sig probably be okay uh you know range doesn't feed a lot of doesn't get poked out very easily ball will be fine um but then I look at like Diva and Zarya, and I, like we talked about already, Reinhardt. How, like, how are you going to do that? Because the way I look at it is like to control the map and to play like more of these quote unquote deathmatchy, less brawly style, you need either mobility and range or range, excuse me. And I look at heroes like Zarya, right? She's got neither. Um, and to a lesser extent, Diva as well, who's, who's mobile, but not, not a lot of range. Do you think yeah. that could be as simple as like increasing her, uh, decreasing her spread? Uh, do you think it would be like reducing booster cooldown? Would it be like with Zarya, maybe increasing her HP a little bit to to like to counter? Like, what do you think? Because it's going to be hard, unquestionably. So I think there's either the, what they might happen is that you have kind of like a massive split, and like the old main tanks are good on the old maps, and the new and the off tanks are good on the new maps. So let's say it's like Volker's talking about front lines. If there is no front line, for example, let's say there's a map that for some reason has like you know, the process side, there are two places on the map that we have to fight for at the same time. Mm. Something like Zarya, where you can bubble, say, both your engages at the same time, could be really good. True. Or like True. Diva fighting on one place, and then, you know, instantly when you need to respond, get to the other side in time. And maybe main tanks can't contest that, and that's kind of like where those off tanks kind of find their strengths. Or a map that has three really good flanks, maybe that's where Hog is really good, because he can, like, mm -hmm. solo take one of those flanks, and then mm -hmm. one support goes with one DPS, whatever. So it could be that off tanks kind of find their footing in the more, like, chaotic overwhelming kind of maps that are new and it could or it could be that they kind of try and merge everything and they try and make 
Ryan more mobile and Monkey more mobile uh, towards kind of like multiple fights happening at once, and then they make yep. the off tanks a bit more grounded. So I think they can either they would either try and merge the tanks, or they will try and just keep them. They'll leave them relatively separate and expect to see different metas evolve around different right. map types. It could be both. Right. Right. Makes sense. Um, but what was kind of disappointing is that like outside of Zarya in the stream, they didn't really show any other changes like to the off tanks mm -hmm. to like kind of indicate where they were trying to take it, which is a shame, I think. Because mm -hmm. the Zarya thing with two bubbles gives her more flexibility. It's no longer, I bubble myself to do one thing, I bubble my main tank to do one thing. And that's kind of like all you can do. Now it's like, okay, maybe the Zarya becomes like the key focus with two bubbles. Did Diva have more DM? I don't know, I can't and, verify and that. So people, people said that it looked like she had more DM, but I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, Sigma and Arissa are like quarantined as well. So it, the, my, in my eyes, the reason they say they're quarantining static things is that they're going to make them less static. That's my idea. Okay. So in theory, they're, they're aiming for things to be able to cover more places in the map. So, so yeah, they said they gave me the more DM. Okay. See, I don't in think that case, that kind of adds necessarily to necessarily the, the play for her, though, because I don't think DM is a problem. I think it's like the... I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm talking on my butt here. So. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe if DM can reach, you know, both fights at the same time, you know, within like a reasonable distance. It's like crazy, and you can, you know, DM both duels at the same time. That could be really good. Right. I mean, the other thing to consider with tanks getting poked out is that there's also now two supports to heal one tank. So, you know, maybe that's less of an issue. That's something they mentioned a lot, is that you don't have the deal of healing two tanks anymore. There's a lot less demand for raw right. healing in right. the game. Right. Which, again, to me, is like, it, that's good for tanks like Reinhardt. Maybe like, hey, I'm not completely inting. But that still says, hi, we're going to be playing more Briggs Zen, <laughs> you know, because yeah. like, why, why on earth did you play Moira with one tank? Um, sure. yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and not only is she bad at controlling angles, but she's like, uh, so this might even be, this is less like, so I think this is, isn't not just about tanks, putting this in, but also about heal oriented supports like BAP is going to be awful with this. Um, yeah, Bap sure. is going to be awful. Moira is going to be awful. Ana is going to be relatively weak. Uh, I think Briggs Zen. Uh, Lucio is going to be terrible. I think literally to me, Briggs Zen, Mercy, maybe Ana. I don't see any yeah. other reason to run any other support on any map that resembles anything that's open space at all. They didn't. They didn't actually touch Moira in the. As far as I remember, they no one played Moira. So perhaps some change is happening there. Uh, I saw them play Bap. Yeah. So Bap's not quarantined just yet. Yeah. But I think like BAP is going to be trash. Like it's there's your half of yeah. your abilities are small area location. For sure. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean all of your abilities, and then obviously your healing as well. Uh, will Unless he becomes only... like very damage heavy. Right. For right. example, right. you know, you right. know that kind of like off angling BAP style. True. True. Exactly. I mean, he does have a ranged weapon. That is like how you. Do yeah, that's like his one thing. He has a right. gun and he has a window. That could make him. You know, that might make him stand out. And the lamp is incredible self sustain. Right. Right. Um. Uh, I'm, this isn't going to be just about 5v5. We'll talk about other things, guys. Uh, why would Lucio be bad? Just because if there's... If there's, like... It's not just because Brawl's bad. It's because Overwatch has always been about angles and map control, right? And Lucio has kind of fallen out of favor in any comp that's not hard Brawl, like, or Brawl variants, right? Um, but when it's not just about the fact that, oh, it's more, like, Brawl's bad. It's because that there's less... There's going to be less justification to stack. And so heroes that benefit from that stacking are going to be hurt. Yeah, like just looking at the new maps, it doesn't look like you can just, you know, do one rotation, your whole team speeds through the entire map and clears every high ground and you win. It's like if you clear one high ground, they can get behind you, they can go around, they can retake it. Yeah. So it kind of loses the justification for how many people is he actually helping to do their job. Right, exactly, exactly. And and obviously, like, his lack of range is a big deal as well. It's not just the aura, it's the fact that he has a very, very slow, low damage projectile. Um you know that like he's not going to be getting value that other more range supports will provide aoe healing is significantly nerfed i mean indirectly absolutely absolutely um i mean the other negative that we talked about is overwatch league positions i mean we joke <laughs> we joked about it in a chat earlier or and not chat but a team speak earlier we're like oh you know this is they're just gonna be playing an over overwatch league is just gonna be on overwatch one you know you know we've been playing a different last year it was like we were playing in different patches with contenders and trials and over overwatch doesn't actually translate into overwatch league like overwatch league will forever be on overwatch one so we don't need to worry about it um i mean obviously this is going to impact overwatch league what are your thoughts mm -hmm. on this? Because I assume that they're going to release another tank at some point as well. I don't know when, what, or where. Um, but... Yeah, it's like, what, four heroes, they said, for the new game? So presumably one is a tank. Of course. Which will probably be designed around Overwatch 2 kind of strengths. Right. So I think 
I mean, we've seen this. We've again, we've already kind of seen this in the game. Besides this, like for example, main supports used to play Lucio Mercy. Remember the whole idea of flex support was that that name came from oh we have our lucio support and then our flex support will play ana or zen right yeah but that but so like and and that's where the, that's like that archaic terminology but now you've got main supports that have to play lucio mercy and bat and brig right and Z flex supports that have to play moira and zen and bap and ana yeah. and then you know you have that and then you have main tanks that have to play ball winston arissa ryan I mean, heck, we even had a Hog Zarya meta for a while. We had main tanks on Yeah, we had hog. main tanks on Hog. We you had know. Ball, off tanks on Ball. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, off tanks on Ball, exactly. And we had very, you know, goofy counter strats with like Ryan Winston where you, or Ryan Orissa, where you have main tanks on, mm -hmm. or off tanks on Ryan or Orissa or Monkey. Uh, Flex DPS has been the big one, right? The, yeah, like there's no projectile DPS, isn't there? Thing. Projectile DPS is dead. It's not just because projectile DPS's heroes are weak right now, but also because it, you flanker comps are so strong sombras and tracers and, and and things like that like you your your flex dps player at the overwatch league high top containers level you have to play tracer you just have to like you can't not play tracer uh another one is sombra like oh, everyone kind of has to have at least have an idea of what they're doing with sombra we see hit scans playing echo uh we see flex dps players picking up a little bit of mccree um i mean we just looked hit at scans on hanzo right hit scans on hanzo exactly that Insane. was a, exactly exactly symmetra as well so like there is across the board, everyone's kind of had to learn dip more and more heroes and kind of flex outside their role. So people are like bemoaning the fact about learning a lot of tanks. And I do think that's going to be difficult. I definitely think tanks uh, play style and, and knowing your hero is a little trickier with tanks than it is with DPS, uh, just because of like the play style adjustments. Um, but I don't think it will be as bad as people are saying at the pro level. The main concern here is obviously that there's going to be half the number of jobs required. Um, yeah. And I, I know some people were saying like, oh, it'll be okay because they'll need like three tanks to specialize in the different tanks. Bull crap. They will, I don't know any, like we, we, we've already seen the death of massive rosters in Overwatch League as it is. I mean, how many 12 man rosters we have in Overwatch League right now? Like two, something like that. Um, yeah, probably like some crazy Chongdu thing or something. Yeah, yeah, and and people are realizing this just doesn't work. Like teamwork is too important. Uh, you know, synergy, building like camaraderie, and also they're just stupid expensive. So um, I think this is unquestionably this is going to shrink rosters by a tank slot. I think we'll probably I don't know probably two tanks. Uh, yeah. I think that's probably fair, but you're not going to see three tanks on a team. I don't think anymore. So yeah, you so probably have like the mainstay tank and then like. The one guy is maybe like i don't know crazy zarya for like the one map that right. Zarya's OP he's, on he's, he's great with the off tanks and he can also play a decent ball or something like that right so yeah. like maps where maybe the off tank position is really good or hog ball is really good there you know whatever um mm. but so this is going to affect overwatch league positions for sure um i think jane posted that thing on twitter that everyone's making fun of like that was the main reason why this happened uh, i don't think that's accurate but i do think that is something um that it, it's going to have an impact on this for sure um I mean, I think the other thing to remember is that there's kind of like a relative player shortage anyway. So I think, you know, if there's like talented off times, like Fury's not going to lose his job. Mm -hmm. Fury will find a way to stay in the game. You know, it, won't, it might necessarily be like doing what he's historically known for, but he, he's so good, he'll find a way to stay in the game. Mm. And in the same way, I think, you know, there's talent is drying up, you know, within tier two and tier three. So it's kind of like, you know, spreading out six players into now five man rosters might not be the end of the world. Right. Depending right. on how how well skills translate and how much time they have to transition between right. their old job and then Overwatch Two or whatever that does. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just we just wait and see right now. I mean, it's definitely a nail in the coffin, especially with how like like looking at these maps, like again, just like how different each point is from point to point to point. Um, and considering like to me this this is also another like this is going to be another you need to be flexible in DPS kind of a situation. Um, yeah, especially because alts are way slower as well. Okay. So like I because tanks that. have a passive. So tanks have okay, so it's kind of like a byproduct, but they haven't changed like the alt values as far as they said. But because you don't have two tanks to farm off of and tanks have a passive that reduces the alt charge they give from taking damage. Oh the alt economy in general in the game is like way slower. Oh gosh. That's actually pretty so that, big. Now wait a second. So that, they, that affects like how much you switch and stuff between points. They did this before though, didn't they? 
they did slow it down globally by like what was but it 10 percent in goats didn't people say that that ironically meant that people were less likely to swap because they'd already we took it to, it's, i'm not going to build another ultimate before this like this map is over yeah so i don't know what impact it will have but it will definitely change how people approach the maps whether you know yeah they yeah you know and it's so, also interesting because i think some of these ultimates might also need to be re not reworked but like looked at again because some, yeah like what does blizzard do like what is blizzard gonna what is honestly like another thing is like bob won't be i mean bob i guess for point pressure but bob is another one like there's just it's gonna be a lot easier to los or on bob but blizzard for sure sound barrier is gonna be atro <laughs> atrocious you know um i'm trying to think what else here um diva bomb is gonna be less impactful for sure a lot less impactful know? graviton will be harder to get consistent value out of um i mean people will be like solo grabs will be that'll be all you get <laughs> no yeah, you so get no, solo grabs grabs. Like the norm, uh, yeah. whole hog probably going to be a lot weaker as well uh, just a lot of different things that i think across the board will be interesting um i don't think ultimates being a slightly weaker is a bad thing though i think that's something that we've seen with the game is like uh some ult, some ult driven metas can be a little sleeper yeah. Um, when it when it's like the ults are up every single fight, it's just you know what the fight plan's going to be every time. So it definitely makes things more dynamic. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So um, Overwatch League positions, chat. What are your thoughts on negatives? I'm going to open up the uh, floor to you guys. Keep trying to keep them succinct because I'm going to. If you guys make a point, I'm going to talk about it a little bit so I won't be able to catch everything. Um. supports will be under more pressure potentially on retail. it's kind of two sides to it because you have fewer people to heal yeah but you have fewer people helping you and there's more people on you because of the flanks so it's less like you can sit in that one super safe backline spot in your spawn and no one can touch you so it's definitely going to be more i think support's going to have to do a lot more kind of like fighting and less healing i think um one thing and i saw super's tweet was about losing that tank synergy right the orissa mm. hog the ryan zarya the winston diva the winston zarya the balls are that is one of the more satisfying aspects of overwatch for sure um what are your thoughts on that because obviously that 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 hits close to home for you yeah i think it's the same it's a shame to lose it it'll, it'll be a, you know it's a nostalgia thing as well but I, I suppose we'll have to find a way to kind of move on with it there'll be there'll be other things that pop up eventually we'll find you know some there'll probably be more you know tank dps energy for example you know if there's like you know fighting on a flank with a dps or whatever There'll be more of that, and you know we'll find something else. It's a shame, but it's kind of how it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, another, another point in chat that was made as well is that supports have a passive now that they all have self heal. They have regen. Like oh yeah. Mercy does. Yep. Supports. It's not a ton, but it's like ten HPS after a few seconds. Right. Which is something. So it's like the uh, Zinyat, like the Zinyata or Mercy self heal. Yeah. For Zinyata, yeah. it's the shields, but yeah, it's the same kind of idea. Okay, that's interesting um that's gonna make it easier i i i do feel like um i wonder if we see i'm just thinking about like the and dps faster here. yeah yeah D D oh, dps move faster as well yeah so they will have like higher base moves wait tracer as well because trace so, trace yeah. tracer and genji were already i think what, they already do i don't know if, yeah yeah, yeah. but now like every that. dps is ahead and i presume tracer genji even further okay interesting okay so i guess positives is there are positive here's uh positive here there's a couple of like mitigating circumstances or mitigating choices they're making uh like they are looking at static tanks um they are giving supports a slight passive heal um you know maybe they are like keeping up with the times in terms of like the overall macro understanding of the game in terms of like less brawl uh less visual clutter Q time, more individual impact. People are going to try it from just like a business standpoint and potentially easier balancing um, because there's fewer variables on the table. Is that that's my take anyway? Who knows? Negatives, um, like there's like I mean honestly, like I put Ryan shortcomings here, but just like the casts hero shortcomings um, because like we talked about, it, it's not just May's Blizzard, but May Wall. <laughs> what a useless mm. ability, right? Um, freeze i know we talked about like well i think they removed freeze but like again that that's going to be a lot weaker uh ryan shield a lot weaker um things like a junk rat trap like are you joking like like what does yeah. that actually do so there's just going to be so many heroes i think depending on uh the creation and structure of these maps that have the potential now again i'm, I'm ignorant on this i haven't played the maps i don't know how many open maps that there are but i think there are a lot of abilities, abilities and heroes that are going to need to be like a readjusted and looked at um 
So that's what I think was kind of lacking is that they kind of showed this, they had this showcase, a few heroes were different that they kind of played a lot of, and then yeah. the rest of them kind of left something to be designed. And it's like, yeah, it'd be easier. It'd be easier to tell what, you know, if, if, if we think the direction is good, if we see like a bigger kind of quantity of how many right. different heroes right. they have, like, where are they taking it? Is Junkrook going to have, I don't know, yeah. 10 traps, or is he just going to have a different balancing philosophy yep. what do they say like a little bit of information is a dangerous thing or something like that i feel like we get we're yeah. given a little bit of information and we're like yeah well but oh no like it's dead all these other heroes suck like it's over now like where it would have been almost better to just like that sh like show a little bit but like we don't yeah it's kind of like an awkward middle ground where they want to they want to show where they're going with it but we don't know like how far they're going to take it right because they say that you know they're actively looking at all the heroes and they they're going to rethink things and stuff like that yeah, so many chats says junk ten traps, please. Yeah, exactly. Just, th just th like your trap now is like a has like bap lamp arc. You could just throw it all over the map, you know. I come back and I hear talk about. Hey, Prime, thanks for the sub, mate. Continue, please. Jeez, yeah. Um, but yeah, the hero shortcomings those need to be addressed for sure. Picks are more significant, so there's more individual aspect uh, impact. But there's also like, hey, if we lose somebody, this just it's just over, right? Like that's going to be tilting. Playing into a widow is tilting as it is, but it's going to be tilting. Oh, the widow got a pick. Okay, well that's another team fight over. Um, balancing tanks is going to be really hard, more a lot more so than a lot of the DPS and supports. Um, uh, but also like we talked about the supports as well, like the specific supports without range, like them wears the heal bot uh, supports. I mean, to be honest, I think Moira is a joke anyway. And I think that that's something that they needed to look at with some of the support balances, like how they control the map and things like that. But um, Overwatch League positions, you know, somebody's going to be losing their job for that for sure. And then losing that tank synergy, something that's a signature Overwatch, uh, like class, the Ryan's are, the Winston Diva, that, those kind of things is going to lose. Um, Chad, are there any last thoughts that you'd like to see discussed on this before we move on to talk about more? Because there was a lot more that came up here, and I, I'm not fully aware of that. So, um, one tank player puts way too much responsibility in one person, All right? It, we just it just depends on like how much impact does this tank actually have, right? Overwatch have tanks have less knockback too, other than they get so passive. So they so like you know steadfast. like the Ryan passive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. They will have that. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. And um, the other thing is that. They globally, re they're experimenting with globally reducing um, movement acceleration. Okay, so here's a, here's a thought: reducing time to kill. So one of the things that got me into Overwatch was the respawns, and how there like there are one shot heroes, and the time to kill can be very fast if you're sloppy. But I, I it wasn't like respawn, I get shot and I die instantly. It was like, okay, these team fights are kind of taking some time. We're trading resources. I'm, I'm getting my my uh, serotonin input from shooting the enemy off tank and shooting the enemy main tank. You know, um, with this, it, it does feel as if there's not maybe maybe the pace of the game isn't going to be uh, faster, but it definitely feels like once health or HP trades start to happen, that there's a potential of things going wrong really fast. You kind things of could collapse very quickly, yeah. Yeah, so like I, I do see that as a negative for my choice, right? There's a reason, like I said, I didn't get into CSGO, I didn't get into the Valorant, because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not there to hold a corner for 15 yeah. minutes, right? Uh, and then, you know, so I, I wanna be able to, I wanna be able to like have a more fluid play style where like, yeah, I get punished for mistakes, but the actual engagements aren't just over and done with. So what do you think? Do you think that this is going to affect the length of those engagements or what? I think with five people, then you're going to kind of reach those break points where fights don't get sustained more. But I think the way the maps are built, it means that they're going to be more fights because the spawns are closer in terms of like the shortcuts, the way the kind of the payloads kind of like loop around and stuff, kind of give it that same feel. Huh. That's a, that's a so, take. Yeah. I haven't thought of that. So I think I think with the quicker fights and the more angles controlled, but also the fact that they've made more fightable areas on the maps, like fewer of those like key power positions, mm -hmm. we might see kind of more variety in where the fights happen. And maybe mm -hmm. even if the fights are a bit quicker, they at least happen in more different places. So we don't just get the same, you know, you're scrimming the tenth time this week and you're <laughs> playing Anubis for the fifteenth time this week and right. yeah, you get to you get to hold first point and you know, do the same old, same old. All right, so so more, there might be kind of more variety, at least for the start. More variety. Um, there are going to be more fights. It's going to be less of like, you know, this is a set way to hold Anubis, and if you mess it up, that's just it, right? There's going to be yeah, multiple, you know, multiple, multiple fights and multiple different situations. So especially in push, for sure, it'll be very different. Okay. Uh, do you think the current maps are too big for ten people? 
I mean, Renee, you watched they, a lot more than I did, so they talked about it. So they said that it felt, it still felt fine on, on the five v five with the with the alt maps. I don't know how much they changed them or how much they plan to change them, but I think I think it'll be okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. So to me, I, I look at this and I'm like, you either dive or spam, because people are saying like, mm. oh, people are just gonna go dive and kill you. Yeah, but. But if spam has a really long sight line, good luck trying to stage a monkey or even a ball into that unless they have like some form of cover because they're just going to get spammed like instantly one shot over and over and over again. Like you have to actually win the flank, win the sight line. There's a reason you don't play uh, like you don't play <laughs> Genji, Sombra and Winston on Junkertown first. Just because they're playing Widow doesn't mean you insta win with that. Um, yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Okay. Um... So what else? What else happened here? Because we talked a lot about five v five, but what, what else was like? I guess on interesting on the board in terms of like what they actually discussed or released. Uh, a lot of new maps. They look design wise. They look really nice. They look really pretty. They, they're definitely putting a lot of effort into like kind of overhauling the appearance of the game. Okay. okay. Um. Now, what do you mean overhaul? Like just like cleaner, updated? Because to be honest, like I don't know if this is just the the first round rendition. It looked a little more cartoony than I'm used to. Um, yeah, it looks a bit more. Was that just? I think the UI is kind of like early stage. At least the UI is a bit more boxy and stuff. I don't like yeah. it. I don't think a lot of people I, like the UI. Yeah. I expect it to change. Yeah, I, I hope. I hope it changes. I did not like the UI. <laughs> I was like, they've changed the sounds. Like a, a mobile well. game or like what? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Okay. So cool designs, new maps, UI early stages. What else did we have to worry about? Oh, gun sounds like. Gun sounds. I think Overwatch has always always had really good gun sounds. So I I and sound design in general, Overwatch is brilliant. So I, I have no concerns about that i think by the end of it will be fine okay okay like i have like an eight-year-old hyperx cloud 2 headset and i can i can literally hear everything on the map like i'm so used to it the sounds are brilliant in overwatch so okay. i have no concerns about that okay slower movement acceleration what is what's going on with that because because with so overwatch you know, i don't know how much so, i don't know how much csgo you've played i i mean I, here's, here's what i do know i know overwatch you can stop on the dime which yes. makes it really hard to shoot it's like what, yeah. I think, what is it, the hardest the game? Hit boxes. Hardest game in the world to aim in, I think. I think yeah, it was it's like, like that in Fortnite. Right. Um, and what slower movement accelerate? Does that mean that there's going to be some movement conservation? Yeah, so it takes longer to speed up right. and change direction. So in other words, the eighty eighty strafing instead of like looking like this, like it'll yeah, be like so eighty eighty is harder. Yeah, like there's going to be like the periods of like it's subtle. Yeah, they said it's subtle, but it will definitely yeah, it will help on those like kind of edge cases. Interesting. Now, why do you think they would do that? They said there's a lot of debate around it. So I think that's something that, that's still subject to change. But I presume it's to um, perhaps compensate for the fact that there's a lot more kind of DPS dueling happening on flanks. That that sure. becomes more of a, like an issue. Like, let's say maybe supports have an easier time defending themselves from like crazy strafing DPS if there's more of that. Or... Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so maybe just because that, that's happening more, that, that, that something became... It became more of a concern. So in a sense, it's a bit of a hit scan buff. Uh -huh. That's fair. But actually, no. It, actually, it might. It kind of a, it's a buff to all damage in a sense because it, it means that you can lead projectiles better. <laughs> right, right, right. It's it's odd. I'm not I'm not sure what I think about it, but uh, I'd have to actually try. It. And as long as you said it's subtle, I think it will be interesting to see. Um, okay. So what else did we get besides like in, before before? Because I I'm hearing a lot of like individual hero stuff, and I would love to go over that individually. But before we do that, is there anything like overarching that we saw? I'm looking through my notes because we kind of covered a lot of it. Uh, that's kind of it, really. They were pretty slow with the stream. Okay. They 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 basically just a lot of them like like sixty percent of the stream was them just watching like a gold lobby play five v five and kind of like vaguely oh, talking CC. over it. CC. CC. Yes. With CC. So they said that the overall mentality with CC was to decrease it on DPS and supports outside of skill shot type stuff like Anna. So they mentioned Flashbang as a thing that they are looking at removing. They didn't mention Brig, but there wasn't any Brig being played. So I, I presume they're addressing Brig uh -huh. on the CC side. <laughs> but I think they said that they wanted to keep Sleep Dart for the moment. Um, because they, they see that as like a skill shot, yeah, it's rewarding. Sure. It's, 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 it feels, you know, when you get slept, it feels fair. Yeah. They hit their shot fine. More so than it's a long most CC. CCs anyway, for sure. Yeah. I didn't, I think they, played sombra they think... sombra was being played but i definitely expect hack to get worked on i saw vulcan talk yeah. about it being a solo tank versus hack will be a nightmare true i mean sombra is just an awfully designed hero thank you for the sub, for the sub by the way kipo um i think 
I mean, Moira is an awfully designed hero. I think Samra is also like the, her 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 ability is literally oh you can no longer use your abilities. And I, I get like it's yeah. a cool little hero design, it's a cute little thing, but like in functionality, there's nothing ever rewarding about Sombra whatsoever. And it's not even like she's an easy hero to play. Like when you I have, think Sombra has one of the highest skill ceilings. Right, in the exactly. Game. She's the, the, the fact that you have such a high skill ceiling hero, and yet people hate playing against her so much. That's a red that's flag. A, yeah, that's okay. So people I, I hate think... people hate Moira. People hate Junkrat because they're easy to play, right? Obviously, like okay, that just yeah, happens. like Hog as well. Right, right, Hog as well. Very, very one dimensional heroes, but like. Sombra, like I feel like I should be respecting yeah. Sombra players it's more, a but shame. I don't. Yeah, because there are such good Sombra players. Like I remember, like Ding in like season three, Owl, or like when out when Goats was ending as well. Right, like, right. He was fantastic at what he did, and I, 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 I think Sombra's really fun. Like her gun, her gun play is really fun. I yeah, like it. It sounds amazing. But then, but then it kind of just gets ruined because you know you can play f perfectly on Sombra and people won't respect it because they're like, oh, you're playing Sombra, fuck you. Right, right. So like, yeah. It's, I think that's weird. something they should definitely they should look at retooling for sure. For sure, for sure. Because I think like I think the stealth mechanic is cool. Uh, I think the translocator mechanic is cool. Uh, I mean, and maybe maybe I don't even know. Okay, maybe you could make hack. I don't. I, I honestly don't know. There's there's a bit other better people, smarter people than me that have offered suggestions. I don't want to go down that rabbit trail. Um, do I think Brig is poorly designed? I think Brig at release was busted, but I think Brig right now actually functions pretty well in her niche. Um, Brig is actually pretty well balanced right now, um, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I think she just fits the kind of overarching philosophy of the game at the moment. That's exactly. why she, she sees exactly. a lot of play. Exactly, exactly. She's it's not... one of those heroes where like she got played so much when she was busted that people got really, really, really good at using her. In the same way when Sigma, if you put current live Sigma out at launch, he'd be terrible. No one would ever play him. He'd be awful forever. Because no one, people would not put in like the 50, 100, 200 hours that they needed to get yep. to the level where yep. they were dominating on Sigma. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that. Have, has there ever been, at least since I've played the game, I don't know that there's ever been a weak on release hero. I mean, maybe Arissa. Brett, Arissa Ball and Arissa took a while. They took like six months and then Ball, they blew up. Ball for sure. Ball for sure was probably the weakest one that I've seen. Um, but I wasn't even playing around Arissa. She also didn't get played for a while. Yeah. Uh, Ash, but then again, oh, they had Ash as well. Ash was also. It was the same thing where they got a, like sleeper buffed, and then people realized they were good at they were really good at this thing. Same with Anna in a sense when yep. she got released. Yeah. And then people got so good at using Ash and Anna in this kind of specific playstyle that then when they get when they got like nerfed three or four times, they still get played. Yeah. Yeah. Because people got so good at using them, and they kind of they in a sense like these heroes like Ball, Ash, uh, Brig, the new Brig at least they kind of. All the very big players in the kind of true, philosophy that true. kind of surrounds Overwatch at the moment. Chat saying and Ash was thrown into a goat's meta as well. That's a really good point. Yeah, Ash was thrown, but it was like, I think it was kind of like, oh, she has a dynamite. It must be great against goats. It's splash damage, <laughs> and it it was eventually good against goats, but it took a while. Yeah, it took a long time. Her gun, like that, she needed a reload or whatever. Had motor bullets or whatever adjustments they had to make. But uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so decrease CC and supports and DPS. I think that's interesting. Um, people were talking about passives. Is that a thing with this as well, or like additional? Yeah, abilities? so that was the thing with like that was the thing with like all tanks have knockback reduction, all DPS have movement speed, all supports have regen. That oh, was the passive. Oh, so 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 now I'm thinking like mo kind of a thing where they get like oh genji has like a triple jump now or something like that but no okay, i don't I, ha I haven't heard any hero specific passives okay okay all right so this is where i want to open up uh, like i'm going to use chat's massive brain chat did we have specific hero buffs nerfs new abilities etc and what were they and then i want to talk with you about like what they what they meant um Ultimate charge reduction against them, right? So yeah, let's hear the tongue passive. Ultimate, ultimate charge, passives, movement speed, ult charge, boop, and then heal passive with supports. That's pretty interesting. Okay, so let's just stop with the uh, Reinhardt. Uh, we'll start with Reinhardt. <clears throat> Reinhardt two fire strikes. I mean, that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Um, it's the one ranged ability that he has. Uh, I believe his shield was reduced as well. Um, yeah, they're trying to reduce emphasis on shields, but they, yeah, right. obviously the fire strike. I think again, right. I don't know how much impact it has. Like a Ryan fire striking cross map isn't like the biggest concern in the world, but at least gives him a chance to interact a bit more right. at a distance. Right. right, exactly. Which is so like we talk about mobility yeah. and range. I think are going to be the key here if you're going to have a and solo tank. Also, Ryan has the cancelable charge, and it's kind of like a little bit like experimental, where it's more turnable, so he can kind of access tighter corners and make more out of his charge. So again, more mobility. So we're literally getting yeah. both mobility and range. Well, that's, that's what we wanted. Okay, um, what else have we got here? Let me scroll up so, a little bit. Winston. Monkey has a right click now. 
and it's like a laser. It's like a sim, the kind of like a sim right click where you charge it up, and it's like a kind of like straight fire laser, like a kind of like hit scan beam kind of thing. Like charge sim orb or a charge sim zoom. Like beam. yeah, so it's, yeah, so it's like it, it has the same like uh, mechanics as sim where you have to hold it down before it fires, but it's like a railgun. Is it like a Spartan laser from like Halo or something? Um, am I thinking of that right? Like where you 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 charge it up and then zoom and like like hit straight yeah. line. Okay, it's that yes. kind of thing. Yes. Okay, and what does that do? How much damage? Anything that we should know um, about that? I didn't get a good catch of it on stream. It's probably my ballpark guess would be about eighty damage for a hit. Okay. So I guess because what they said is that he can do it while he's jumping. So I guess that they're kind of trying to add that into his kind of burst combo. Okay. Did I didn't you, really get a clear look. Any at it good guesses see, like, from chat? Thing. So eighty damage. What do you What do you guys think? I'm gonna guess it doesn't headshot. Um. I think if you really looked carefully at the void, you could probably find it, but it was sure, kind of sure. shuttered. Sure, yeah, that's fine. I just want to get like, do we get an idea of like about how much? Seem about 60, seem pretty low damage. I mean, it, good. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> fairly yeah, low I think, damage. Yeah, I think the idea is that it's kind of like a, just an extra thing to give him so that when to finish people, if they get like a last second blink or something, that's going to be like the first use of it. That's what they mentioned sure. is that, you know, when people slip out and you don't want to like then use your jump to chase and then feed. Right. Um, oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. So you like you go in, you land, you zap, zap, zap. They chase outside a bubble, and you can finish them off as they escape. Or if it's an immobile target, you can utilize your beam on, on engage mid air, right? Yes. And then landing damage plus zap. I mean, there's your Winston one shot combo. combo. That's that's your actual... one shot combo. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe also passes through shield and people. Who knows? Okay. Um, I don't have much water left. Sorry, guys. Hang on. Uh, so that's that's interesting. Uh again it, it kind of fits like what we're looking at here like i don't think we're looking to see we're going to see tanks with more hp um very uh, i mean ryan did have 550 but i, I don't think it's like significant i think it's going to be more about the more range more mobility this is range right yeah this is the range more, okay more kind of presence in the map right exactly okay so what was the deal with may um did the you maze m1 no longer freezes but does more damage still cleaves does more damage so blizzard, blizzard still freezes it looked similar in terms of size and everything but it just slows now so i guess the idea of it is that you're because may is no longer going to be able to just run around the, the one choke in the map and freeze the one target that everyone's on they kind of i guess yes the ult still freezes um but i guess it's going to be more of like a you know if you're what 2v2 and you can cleave both of them with the left click and slow them down and then suddenly your ash has free headshots or whatever that's kind of probably what they're going for so sense. rather than may kind of being like a 1v1 monster or like a team fight main tank killing monster it's going to be more like a interesting on the side thing i'm I mean, not sure how much it would do if like wall doesn't get changed and blizzard doesn't get changed but it's definitely kind of in that direction right right i mean it makes it a lot more less frustrating to play against but i don't it doesn't really fit our archetype of like doesn't give her more range doesn't give her yeah. ability and i think she is going to be this is a straight up nerf um because it does more damage yeah but that's not why you're mouse wanting so like i would be interested to see what they do with her because from what we're seeing from the map she looks like she'd be a terrible dps pick for like this whole meta this the way this whole thing is moving so like i think may is gonna see more work um yeah this, i think this, so too this is awkward that's that's just an i'm like i'm glad i'm glad like screw may i don't like that that she's just an. i think it's really a positive change arrow. but she'd need to see more kind of to like to right. kind of integrate right. with that to make her work right my, my inside is saying yes but my outside is like no i mean it's not really fair <laughs> like the hero needs to be viable and she's not going to be viable if, if this is all that gets touched on her in my opinion um, perhaps they make something happen with wall that maybe. she can be more mobile with it Maybe that would be interesting. She, I don't know if I can know. Maybe herself, give her like a. She launches herself in the air. <laughs> yeah, like make it like a slide out of the ice or something, or like make the floor slipperier so she can kind of like, you know, set up like a way to traverse between flanks faster yeah. or something like that. All could right. make it more. All right. You know, she could close distance and then, you know, freeze and get, you know, punish people, stuff like that. Sure, sure. Chat, any other changes that we saw? So we saw Ryan, Winston, May, any other heroes? Um... Zarya double bubble. Oh, yeah, Zarya double bubble. Bubble. I'll just say bubble selection because I did see this one. So basically, yeah. Zarya can be I bubble what I want. Yes, I can double bubble myself if I need it. I can. I think that the interesting thing that you sa said earlier, which made me feel a little more optimistic for Zarya, was you can bubble two flanks now. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like it's not like if you're like, hey, I can't contribute. I'm stupid, and I have like a five meter radius range. You know. 
Uh, but at least I could bubble my tracer and I can bubble my ball, right? Or I can bubble my widow and I can bubble my ash, right? I, I, I mean, I, yeah. I, that's definitely something. That that's flexibility. And something Connor mentioned earlier was that you could maybe see the return of like Zarya Doomfist, like the China thing. Yeah. With Doom, yeah, like so you kind of forced to have a main tank again. Yeah. With Zarya, and you can double bubble the Doom Doomfist. All I can instead. think of is how cancer it would be to have like a tracer or a Doomfist in your backline with two bubbles. It would oh be hard. Oh my gosh, that would be awful. That would be absolutely atrocious. I don't know what you do at that point. I think you just you find a new game. Um That would be that'd be terrible. Okay, um, but it's definitely interesting, like you being able to like choose what you do want to do with your bubble and more brawl oriented maps. That also means that your Zarya can play a lot more aggressive than she would otherwise. I still don't know that you'd play Zarya as a main tank in a or as a tank, I guess now in a more brawl oriented map. Um, but it does definitely gives her some more options. Um, I hope I didn't like just spark. There's some like Overwatch two dev that's like, oh, that's a great idea, double bubble for Tracer. Let's go do that. Um, okay. Any other changes that you guys in chat that Renee or there anything off the top of your head? I want to see if chat can remember any. They um, they tinkered with overheals, over health. Okay. Oh, really quick. So, D- Diva DM duration as well. Yeah. Forgot that one. I mean, I kind of was already said I was skeptical of this one a little bit. So yeah, so I think they they've changed overheals, overshields now to be kind of like one unified thing. It's like a green health bar now. So like Lucio gives you green HP, Dumal gives him green HP. Oh. So they kind of just merged all of that because it was kind of misleading. Where like Lucio beat is blue, but it's not doesn't do the same as the blue health bar that Zen has, and then you know it's all kind of a bit all over right, the place. Right, right, right. So they kind of merged that kind of overheal into kind of one simple thing. Right. And overshields are the stuff that you can actually build ult charge off of. In other words, you can kill a Doomfist with 400 HP and you get that extra 150% or extra 100 Seems like ult it. charge. Yeah. Same thing with so that, well. that could be enough to. Uh, I don't know if. Wait, ball over shield armor too? gives. Because ball shield doesn't give ult charge. Yeah, that's that could be a thing because they were talking about ball being very oppressive if um oh so maybe ball... DPS didn't have CC so. right so so the idea is that like okay that's that would be weird okay interesting in ball in general his E will be a lot weaker because it's gonna be very hard to get like fat E's like above like two or three people that's true the adaptive shield is gonna be slightly weaker I mean that's one aspect of his kit that's gonna be weaker anyway um, mm. I mean mines as well interesting okay. What are your thoughts on the Diva DM duration? Because there, there's your alliteration. Diva DM duration. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really match our like archetype of like more range, more mobility. It's kind of more like sustained. Like it's it's the equivalent of having more HP. Yeah, um, effectively, she'll be able to do what she whatever she's doing for longer, but it's not going to radically change what she's capable of. Yeah, I agree. I think it'll be like, hey, if I was there. Or if I could reach that, I could help. Yeah. You know, and I'm. If DM was longer or boosters was faster or whatever. Right. Right. Yeah, it's, it's certainly not going to be game changing, but it's a sort of thing where like, maybe it will make like Diva just about good enough in like one place right. or like you know, yeah. and then you take it away and it's fine. All right. I think what it could do is that like, I mean, we we, we actually had this conversation yesterday on stream about like people were asking like why is Brig played in brawl and we talked about like how like oh, it's about, you know, you can pack your DPS and Rally is pretty strong. But the thing that people don't understand is that, like, you can put Brig on a location, on a high ground, on a flank, and that flank is now contested, heavily contested. Mm. It's very difficult to dislodge the Brig from that location, from that high ground, so that map control allows your DPS to play in locations that they couldn't otherwise and denies the enemy team from playing in those locations. Or at least she can simultaneously play on the other side of the map with her armor packs and that's right what exactly makes her, so maybe yeah. with diva in this situation here like she lacks that range of the armor packs that you just mentioned but you can put her on this high ground and i'm going to be an absolute pain in the yeah. neck to get rid of because and I have depending on the map she might be able to contribute i think on maps where all the fighting happens within one booster range of like her central position she'll be good there yeah for sure for sure especially with maps with a lot of high ground obviously where those high grounds are valuable um, and something else I was thinking about is that in general, the off tanks as they are now are pretty good like matchups one v one into main tanks. So oh like, yeah, for sure. Solo diva into solo monkey. If it's very chaotic, she will have a very good time. You know, bullying the monkey out of positions right. and booping his engagement or whatever. So if you have a, if you have a situation where it's very angle heavy and it's very controlled, not much diving happening, the diva might be better than the solo monkey just because she oh, can. Yeah, for sure. If she if she mirrors that monkey, the monkey's screwed. I think solo monkey might actually be pretty bad. Like solo monkey is not good, um, 
in most situations because he's he's kind of a situ he's kind of like he he is mobile but he bleeds a lot of ult charge and he has got low he's low in the armor count as well um yeah. like i think monkey might be a hero that might actually need more buffs than what they gave him he might need 50 more armor he might need um you know a slightly lower jump cooldown or something like that maybe cut his bubble uh hp in half and have his jump or something like that or i mean that would probably be too much but like something like that to give him more options um yeah, that actually. Makes yeah, that so now he has that one shot potential instead. So it's kind of maybe like a you know a tug of war between the diva and the monkey to the monkey to slip through and get his one shot off or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, another thing to consider is that support ult charge will now be faster comparatively because they don't get affected as much by the ult reduction. So you know if ever, if all the DPS and tanks are farming, they're ult slower because they're not doing as much damage. But then the supports are still healing Wouldn't more it be the because there's no reduction. Just oh, because of the reduction thing. Yeah, oh, so the oh. supports will also be slower because there'll be less damage going around, but they don't have the problem of not right. shooting tanks. Because the idea is that it's like, if I'm going to draw this up, it's like six enemies on the enemy, six members of the enemy team are attacking, you know, <laughs> like let's, the six members of uh, the friendly team, right? And all of that damage is all that damage the alt charge is basically benefited by two people right yeah so if you remove one of the people like if we cross off like oh, where's my yellow here we'll cross off this here and cross off this here and you still have five people doing damage here right especially if there's a tank there's one less tank to farm right which is definitely impactful for support alt charge but it's still these two people getting all the alt charge of what the other five are doing um yeah. and because they because the enemy is getting less ult charge for shooting that your tank, I think it will mean that supports will be slightly faster getting ults. Uh, I, I, right I think so. I mean, they'll be slower than they are now, but slightly Yeah, everything will be slower, but supports less. So. Proportionally, mm. it should be a slightly like faster than their tanks and uh, DPS. Like, for example, can you imagine how long it's going to take a Reinhardt to build an Earthshatter? Oh, <laughs> like, forever. Like, 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 yeah, yeah. Or, or a Graviton. Like, holy smokes. Um, movement acceleration. Does that lower the movement skill ceiling? I mean, not sure. I, I mean, yeah, I guess so. P potentially, like, remember when we talked about this? I don't. I mean, you are you up here, but I did this with in chat. We did this with SVB, where we went over like each role, and we did a mm -hmm. skill floor, skill ceiling, value floor, value ceiling, and how we differentiated between skill ceiling and value ceiling is in there's a potential ceiling here, but the amount of value you get from to getting there is worse. So I think the skill ceiling might be relatively unchanged. But the value you get out of min maxing your AD80 might not be as much of a payoff because the enemy team will be hitting more shots. So it's like you're not really rewarded yeah. for min maxing your AD80. The floor, the floor might be a bit higher though, uh, just because you can't just like brain dead smash it and you'll still like jiggle. Now yeah, that you true. accelerate, you might have to be smarter with like the timing That's on actually it and true. how you, so to actually you get in be, people's heads and stuff. Right to be actually competent at like strafing, you actually it's going to take some effort now. Yeah, you so, need to consider like you know how fast you turn. It's not like a huge change, but it was. I think it might push up just a little bit. You need to be a bit smarter with how you do it. You can't just brainlessly spam AD AD and you'll you'll especially because so many so many of the heroes like lean when they change direction and that like kind of puts like a already makes it fairly. No, easy. I I must have I missed this. I I didn't really think about this. Tank passive reduces the ult charge you get from damaging them. So words, that's what I was talking about. When how much I said do we know how much this is? Like we t we talked this up. I, I didn't think about it's it. It's on the stream. Um. About an hour in, chat, I think. There's a tracer me. shooting a hog. Help me, chat, help me. Somebody, it looked some... like a good amount, like half. Yeah. Like half? If it, it's on the stream smokes. somewhere. I'll try and find a timestamp. But she, she's shooting a hog in like Blizzard World, like on her own. And they're talking about. So you can, you can probably massive. skate yourself. But it's like a. It's, it's significant. That's massive because the whole point. Okay, okay. Well, here you, there is your tank buff. Because now we talk about like. I mean, the kill is a kill, right? But. Being able to like we talk about like the diva holding high ground, you're, that's what there, I was there, saying, there's just like, no, yeah. there's a lot of that's that's a lot of like with the longer DM and oh, she has two getting... supports healing her now. Yeah, so it's less, like best man, things to worry about. That's very discouraging to be shooting that and be getting fifty percent return on investment for that. And then the supports are going to get all of the ult charge from healing them back as well. So you yeah. give them a lot more than you gain. Right now, now again, kind uh, of... I remind chat, a kill is a kill, right? A kill is just as a kill and tank is just as valuable, if not more valuable, than killing DPS or support. So if you can guarantee the kill, but just mindlessly spamming to just build an ultimate, that's not as big of a like you're not just gonna be able to just farm the one tank anymore. Tracer got twenty percent ult charge from shooting two clips into a hog. If you go to one ten in the VOD, it's there. One ten, okay.
Maybe my vote is different to yours. Like an hour and ten minutes, right? Yeah. Uh, are you on the Overwatch League one? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's weird. Oh, they're, they're going. Yeah, yeah, here we are. One hour, ten seconds, yeah, forty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so in this case, you can see uh, tanks have a couple things. Uh, so that's so the first one's live, and the other one is a. Uh, so that's on live. So twenty for one clip. Yeah, so it's half. And now eleven. Eleven for a clip. Yeah. Yeah. So basically so half. half. Wow. Interesting. That makes Hog a lot better. Yeah, that makes Hog a lot better. That makes Hog a heck of a lot better because it's that was the big reason why you don't play him is because you're just gonna bleed old charge, you know. Um, wow, yeah, that makes Hog a lot better. Um, I mean, it kills the kills. Keepers, range say. issues, yeah, change a lot. Yeah, I mean, you could very, very realistically like. I'm, I'm thinking about like what would be good. Like, you could run like Hog Tracer Somber Briggs in or something like that. Um, I don't know. In assumption. general, again, yeah, the change kind of pushes the game in the direction of doing things more purposefully. Yeah. That kind of same intention with, you know, now we're making you fight for more angles on the map and think about where you're playing more. Again, it pushes in the direction of less mindless spamming into chokes, more doing something with your abilities and, you know, making considerable gains, not just getting ult charge. Yeah. I tell you what, it's going to be a shock to a lot of bronze and gold players who are going to be like, hey, we can't just stack behind a shield and walk through a choke, and that's not just not going to work anymore. Um, I think people, I think it's a good thing. I do, I do. I think they people are gonna have to realize about like how flanking and holding angles. Like there's so I feel like the Overwatch is like in this little bubble when it comes to comparison to other FPSs where they don't even think about flanking and they don't even think about this until they hit to like platinum oh, yeah, yeah, diamond. Yeah. You know, it's like not even then. I play in platinum diamond all the time. Flanking is like a mystery to them. Yeah. Oh, you're feeding. We need to group up, guys. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. And, and that's like, no, it's, it's ironic because I was saying this the other day is like how in lower ranks, it's ironic that those guys group up the most, yet they complain about the lack of grouping up the most. I mean, I guess it makes sense because it's more important to yeah. them. So they're more likely to call it out when they see it. But I mean, it, it just doesn't happen. And like, that's just not how the game's supposed to be played. So I think maybe removing this tank kind of pushes in that pushes people in that direction but i would like to see i mean this is a completely other can of worms and i don't want to go down this road too much but i mean i had to figure this out on my own right and i feel like that's the case for a lot of people and if you look at a lot of overwatch educational content um especially stuff that's older than i guess the last six months they just don't talk about this like if you look at a, if you look at vod reviews and if you look at you know educational content from some content creators who i won't name uh big ones right they don't talk about that it's yeah. all group up. Don't waste your cooldowns. Don't you know group Stay up and team together, right? Yeah, it's just like it's oh gosh, like you know, it's like so there's like there's these fundamental, mo not just like little like they, that, that's how you play the game, right? And they don't talk about it. So that, no wonder you have so many like lower rank players. So like for me, it's like okay, if this is the direction we're going to go, I would like to see Overwatch actually release a proper tutorial right about like you know okay like the maps are really really big so you might want to experiment with like taking flanks but obviously play around like just different things like that or, or like have more sponsored content of some like I, I don't know but that's that's my that's my like that's my private uh vendetta with overwatch because that's my whole spiel is like positioning and, and flanks yeah. and angles but i mean maybe like, that's something they do more with integrating with owl if they can kind of like make the owl ecosystem more accessible to um to uh you know the casual player base and you see more like owl content coming out so that it's not the dev team necessarily kind of setting the, yep. uh, the curriculum of overwatch but like let's say you know an owl meta develops and you you know you get guest coaches on like rather than just like the analysts who are like diamond players themselves talking about wow this headshot's really good <laughs> they <laughs> yeah which is like i just never watch watchpoint because it's just like the most grim analysis ever like if you get the coach to come on and talk about this is what this is what's changed this month this is what we learned yeah. this is what we realized something like that and then you can you can then integrate that into the main game like you know you can have like yep. a, you know whatever monthly yep. series on this is what the owl coaches have worked on and you know yep. people can learn like that, that that would be awesome and i think it's like and, and i think people like appreciate that like i i know that i even before i really understood or knew the game before i even coached the game i always like uber and mr x and not just because uber was crazy funny intense man but because i i honestly liked mr x i felt like he said some like smart things and like oh i didn't yeah, think about that because right? he was he was a cod pro wasn't he so like he has like a, right, so, an insight on it right so he was he was like an actually like relatively intelligent analysis i don't i haven't watched a lot of it recently i don't know how it's held up 
but but even at like a bronze silver gold player like i was at the time i could kind of tell like oh i like that kind of like more like they're not talking down to me you know what i'm saying um there's yeah. a very uh, i don't know if, how much professional american football you watch but there's a very famous american football quarterback named tony romo and um he retired and basically went into casting and he's making bank right now because he is just you know off of retirement a couple years ago and he'll sit there and he'll break it down and be like well they should be running this play right here and, and oh and he'll pre sometimes predict like what play that they're about to do and the next thing and it's like yeah. people eat that up i i like, not only is he personable but like he's actually extremely qualified he knows the game and so it's like it's very very fun to watch um and this is coming from somebody who, who does like i enjoy american football but i don't i'm not like a pro professional at analyzing it right so like yeah um so i feel like like uh, it would be really cool like with this whole overwatch 2 direction of where these kind of more advanced concepts that just haven't been talked about uh are coming into like into the air that we see more of that not just with overwatch league but also just with like the, the game itself you purchase the game the tutorial talks about it or at least introduces you to these concepts because nobody talks about this like overwatch has an infamously bad <laughs> introductory stage it really yeah, just kind of throws you in your, there your you left know? click shoots yeah 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 exactly so they just like good luck hope you figure it out man you know you know and that's why you see these plat borders stuck in silver i, I joke but like still it's 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 rough yeah people mentioned jake as well it's the same yeah. thing like jake doing the educational content where he'll like he'll go in ranked and he'll, he'll talk about what he's doing and he'll he'll cast and he'll talk about like from a from a professional perspective i like that as well yeah and yeah. i think that's what's kind of lacking in like especially upcoming casters like the people in contenders is that they're kind of like trying to oh my bosses tell me that my my audience is gold i have to keep it to gold you know and they kind of limit what they what they try and talk about. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, it's it's I'm kind of like demeaning. Like it's like, come on, like people are smarter than that. They'll figure it out. Like people, yeah. people, like I see. You know what? You know what? The, like the most triggering comment for me ever, the criticism for me is every now and then I'll see a comment or criticism. Oh, he's he's good, but you know, you're not gonna really understand it unless you're like top OD or something like that. Like my streams. I'm like, are, are you joking? Like that makes me mad. I'm like, man, like come on, like people are not that stupid. They'll they'll figure it out. I think right? something people forget is that like people who are like look at the devs right those people are like i don't know gold or some of them are silver or gold in the game that they work on all day but those people are like gods are like you know graphic design or modeling or blender or whatever like people most of the people who play this game have like a job yeah they do like because they're good at it you know like people aren't like idiots no exactly. they just don't know overwatch exactly exactly and i think like, like if it's explained to them in a decent way they'll be able to figure it out i mean renee you and i are just gonna have to become casters now that's just kind of how it's gonna have to be <laughs> so like i think we've got the resume for it i've got a big mouth you've got a big mouth and we both speak english which is i think helpful um do that okay actually quick question do how, I, I, do you know the answer to this does anyone know chat for the korean viewers do they watch it on a separate entity than youtube do they have different casters for different um nationalities at all they have a korean cast i think okay and a they Chinese do? cast yes they, I mean, they must have korean and chinese if nothing else okay i'm seeing i think the there's a portuguese China. one i remember them announcing portuguese cast really as well from okay Brazil. cool Brazil. yeah yeah cool okay they watch in billy billy yeah, yeah yeah i know of that okay makes sense that makes sense that's cool okay well renee i really appreciate you coming on mate uh, thank you not only for taking the time to type this all up, but also discuss it for an hour and a half now. So it was super, super nice. Do you have a, like a plug for your Twitter or anything else that you have? I mean, my Twitter is not very exciting. No worries. Well, well you're not. I just, I'll just like like maths tweets and then people will unfollow me again. So it's fine. Sure. Let's, uh, I'll, let's, put it, I'll put it in chat. Uh, okay, please, but... please do. But yeah, thank you for coming on, mate. So those of you guys all know, Renee, the off tank and founder of Exoblivione, the most successful uh, open division <laughs> project ever um two years and, and running still so thanks again for coming on mate and again thank you for typing all this up i really 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 appreciate no it no problem all right cheers mate all right have a good day you too Bye.